Weird. It'll may conflict with Twitch's moderation policy. It'll may conflict with Twitch's moderation policy. Shut up, Katrak. Is it creep? <laughs> if I make it one word. <laughs> you can't put creep. Creep? So weird. What else do I need?
Hey, crossroads. Okay. I think I got a checklist now. Coffee, tea, or hot chocolate? I'm a coffee guy. But I'm looking for a hot chocolate alternative. Something hot to drink that feels as... Um, word I'm looking for, like thick. Feels like not so watery, this tea. I don't know, coffee has like more robustness to it than tea. So I'm looking for something that's robust with no caffeine that I can drink at night that's not hot chocolate. <laughs> so you can't just drink hot chocolate every day. It's gonna be a ton of sugar. Although I did figure out a trick for hot chocolate. You put real cocoa in it, and then you don't have to use as much hot chocolate mix. Which saves on the sugar content. Yeah. Real cocoa doesn't mix well with water, but still gives like a shot of like chocolate flavor. And I kind of like the flavor of the chocolate more than the flavor of the sweetness. Like I'm one of those 70% dark chocolate guys rather than the sugary milk chocolate type of guy. And real cocoa is dirt cheap. Because you just go to like the baking section and you buy like a little tin of it and it lasts like $2 and it lasts you for like six months. At least for this where I'm just adding like a this is a little chunk to each hot chocolate. Or you can add a chunk to your coffee as well, if you want chocolate flavor to it. What would go? That would be under the manager.
Okay, so this one's easy. Whenever my Banshee or Raven gets low, we'll release it so that my regular code can pick it up and send it home to repair. Okay, I guess I can show where I'm at with this. I uh, guess I'm launching against Eris. Because so I figured out the bug from last time. Yeah, you can make hot chocolate with real cocoa. And then the sweetness level is whatever you want because you add the sugar yourself. And it is thicker and delicious, but you got it doesn't mix well, right? So <laughs> you got to sit there stirring for a really long time. It's not like the hot cho chocolate mix that'll like instantly mix with boiling water. Yeah, so all of the trigonometry functions in Java take in parameters as radians, where I was putting in parameters as degrees. So every time I did like cos 35, it was, you know, that equates to what, like cos 4000 or something. <laughs> it was just curious, like a random crazy high number, because I didn't realize I was saying 35 radians instead of 35 degrees. Uh, I need to turn off that. Don't know how to turn it off. Nice. Scene swapper. Oh well. Yeah, this is where I figured it out. An angle in radians. Never even would have guessed that. I should have guessed it, but...
the get the health of this banshee. And if it's less than or equal to this. Then we'll remove it. And then we can do something similar for the raven. I don't need this bracket. Okay. Do have a banshee. It's raven at. Let's try to get this window the right size too. There you go. I can kind of mess with the settings a little bit to see how much it's going to follow the terrain or not. Yeah, because now it kind of ends up, this is where I don't want to be. I kind of want to be following this outside, back and forth. Maybe there's some sort of logic I can do to prevent this from happening. Is Benji dead? Yeah, Benji's dead. I don't think I have another banshee at the moment. This game's running slower than real time, isn't it? Guess when you have IntelliJ, two SE2 clients, two bots, and a stream software running all at once, 
I can sell the system. Okay, there's the Banshee. So I added a little bit to allow it to enter creep when it's near creep tumor. But it doesn't aim towards the creep tumor. So it's try it's allowed to enter creep because of that, but it's not actually going after it. And then as it gets close to the edge of the map, it should turn around. Oh. Does it keep getting within the certain distance of the edge of the map and changing directions? Or is it just kind of stuck because of the terrain? Okay, it's only allowed to change directions every eight seconds or so. If I set this, maybe I never set it. No, when I toggle it, I set it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, it's not drawing because I'm in this game. Uh, did you get out? Yeah, it looks like it's having issues again. Okay, let's do some more edits to this. Take a look after we've fixed it up a bit. Yeah, I'm going to guess that all trigonometry is easier when you use radians. I just don't. <laughs> Maybe I should change everything to radians. It's kind of like the metric system of of trig. We all know it's better, but do you actually want to learn it? Okay, let's try 
this one and where's the other one and this one so instead of the banshee always trying to get to the enemy main base we need to change the target to the raven when they get too far away from each other and we need to change the target to a valid tumor when i'm near a valid tumor So for that, we just need to look into the set target position. Right now, this is always hard-coded to the enemy main base, but we need some conditions here. If, if Raven... Uh, I guess if near a tumor first. Because if I can see the tumor, I may as well attack it. It means I'm it's either doesn't require detection, or I got detection from something else, so I don't really need the raven. So near a tumor, position, else if away from raven, and raven position. I'll send me main. Okay. And do it this way. So if there's a valid tumor, then we're heading towards a valid tumor. Now, how do I calculate a valid tumor? I must have done that somewhere else where I'm attacking. Hmm, probably is safe, right? Creep tumor in range. There we go. What does this do? It gets the closest tumor to the banshee. And this is basically saying if it's not deep on creep, And if I get within attack range, am I safe? Like, is there not a bunch of hydras right next to it? And an overseer? Okay, so I can definitely reuse this. Um... <laughs> Yeah, bad, they'll have to find it again, but whatever. Not too worried about performance of this.
Hmm? Group 2 in range. That's the one. That's badly named. Is create two in range. There you Okay. Uh, so this will never actually be null. So I don't need this. What's wrong? Oh, it's not a return statement. That's why. Okay. So if it's creep tumor range, we're going to set our target position to the closest creep tumor. That makes sense. So if we're not near a raven, so in this case, we need to get uh, Raven position. It'll only be one of this type. will always exist, right? Yes. Is this safe where there'll always be a following creep raven? Depends on the manager. Yeah, this play it safe. Let's assume there might not be one.
Okay, so we get the raven position if the raven exists. Yeah, and if there, that raven position exists, then we set the target position in return. Otherwise, we're aimed at the enemy main base. All right. Wait, what? Which one didn't I do? This one. Raven prefers retreating towards my main. Creep clearing when base under attack. Remove cleave clearing when base under attack. That's some job for the manager. Large range check. That's going to be an easy one. I think this will make my bot a little bit easier to take thy beak walk over cliffs. Heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. It's already set to four. Four seems pretty big. Maybe I, the game I played against Eris, I didn't have this change in already. Let's give it a four. I'll just say we're done for now. We can always edit it a bit later. Uh, my name's Steven. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. All right, now I do want to do a couple of changes to the Raven itself. This guy is pretty basic right now. He just kind of follows the Banshee and tries not to die. So what do we want to do? Yeah, when it's dodging enemy units, I don't want it to get trapped deep in, like, the Zerg area. So, I want it to prefer going back to my main a little bit more. Not sure how much control we have over that. Definitely want that set to false, that way it uses this. Yeah, let's give that a big range check as well. All right, let's just overload this method. Or override, I should say. Yeah, so the first thing I'll do is I'll look before it looks as for any dodge positions, this says, okay, if five cells behind me is safe, then let's just go straight back. That's kind of what I want. And then some sort of auto turret encode. Uh, right, I don't have a Raven micro object. 
Let's see what I do with this, my main A move army. Do I really not have a raven micro object? How does Ketrock not have a micro object for ravens? That's Raven Matrixer. Do I even use this? Oh, that's specifically for casting Matrix on ghosts that are nuking me. Very niche situation. And there should be something like do auto turret cast. There we go. Oh, turning Raven. What's this? Under managers. Oh. Right, this is for performance reasons. Every time you query a, a auto turret position, it's very slow, so I had to batch it all together. Eh, uh, okay, let's just not do that turreting thing. It's an easy to do. We'll just say, fuck it. I was thinking like if I was at 180 energy and let's just say there's a queen, just throw down an auto turret in front of it. Because I don't want to be sitting on 200 energy. Um, yeah, so let's make the manager smarter now. So this kind of controls when I should be. Let's have a public variable, first of all. Never actually have this logic. Don't need to clear a creep if they're not Zerg. Okay. I'm playing Dominion Dog yet next, yeah. I was really hoping it would be Connie Nana. I got so much cool versus Zerg stuff to show off. But I never get to face Zerg in a tournament. And when I do, it's a drone rushing bot, a Ling Flood All In bot, or Eris, who is so strong that I can't really show off some of the stuff, like nukes and things. Connie Nana was this kind of a middle of the road macro Zerg bot would have been a perfect. Yeah, but it's going to be Dominion Dog, then likely negative zero, last season's champion. And then if I get past negative zero, it's likely going to be Eris. 
the number one bot on the ladder I had to face in the finals. I do have some stuff I need to work on if we scroll down, but I'm not sure if I wanted to show it on screen stream. because It's got some very uh, secret details in there. And I think last time I dropped the ball by streaming what I was doing against Eris, and he was able to prepare for it ahead of time. Uh, so what are we doing? Yeah, no matter what build I'm doing, I want to make sure that my bot is at least capable of always having one Banshee out. Otherwise, I'll never be able to clear a creep. I feel I got some old variable in here. Like numb banshees or something. Min banshees. So whatever this value is set to, use that value unless it's less than one. And otherwise use like use whatever is greater between one and that value. Although there is a time where I think I at some point I'd set this as, yeah. If I'm playing Mass Raven versus, and there's Hydralisks out, I stop making Cloakless Banshees. But with this thing added, I still want one for clearing creep. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want to clear creep when there's Mass Hydralisk out, but whatever. We'll figure that out later. This whole creep clearing idea might be garbage, but we'll never know until we actually try it out on ladder. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so basically that same code I put in the Banshee and Raven object I need here as well. So when I add new Banshee, I want to make sure it has enough health. And same with the raven. Uh, don't add creek clearing when based under attack. Remove creek clearing based under attack. So this is the big question here. How do you define this? It's not really when base is under attack, it's like, when is shit getting real and I actually need this Banshee and Raven, like, fighting with my army? <laughs> I 
Like if his known army supply is bigger than mine and and he's near one of my bases, maybe. This is one of those decisions that there's always going to be edge cases that make your bot look stupid. I don't really have any code when it comes to this. Like understanding the state of the game, if I'm winning or losing, if I'm under attack or not under attack, if I'm dying or not dying. <laughs> I've never written any code for this. My bot just kind of builds up and then, and then favors defense and attacks otherwise without actually knowing what's going on game state wise. Base is under attack. Since I don't have anything for this yet, let's just throw it in the uh all my generic methods that I stored in unit utils, even if it has nothing to do with units. I don't have anything like this, do I? No, probably not. Hmm. I don't even name this. It's kind of like an am I dying <laughs> method. I think I'll define it by if the enemy army, if the enemy army supply that I know about is bigger than my enemy army supply, is bigger than my army supply, and one of my bases under attack. I feel like I have something for her. My base is being under attack. Maybe this is my main main and natural. Oh. I just saw it. I guess I didn't. Is under attack. There we go. So each base object has an is under attack method. What does that do? Basically, when the lead enemy units within 15 of it. Okay. Mm. I don't know. Let's call it that for now. It's going to be killing me. So, let me supply it's bigger and any of my bases under attack.
Okay, so that tells me if any of my bases are under attack. But if he has like a zergling near one of my bases, then I'm going to cancel. Maybe not the known enemy supply, maybe like the visible enemy, enemy supply. So if there's a major army. Let's create a new object for these bases. Let's create one that returns uh Let me supply a near base. Mm -hmm. Any cash? I think it's the new one I set up. But no, I don't want to use enemy cash because I only care about visible units. Yeah, let's not use anything. Let's just look at what's on the screen. Let's look at the en enemy units where... The distance between that unit... And my base is less than range check. Uh, supply. Shoot, that's going to be in... Maybe I have a helper method for this. Get supply cost. There you go. That returns a float. So I can sum this somehow.
Okay, so we're getting all enemy units that are within that much range of the command center. And then I convert those units into their supply costs and then I add them up. Okay. So now we got a method to find enemy supply near our base. Which compiler do you use? I don't know, whatever comes with IntelliJ. Well, I guess the value of the size of the enemy, enemy army is really should be relevant to the size of my army. I think there's like uh, supply food. They have to call it food in this. So that's my army supply. So if the enemy army size near that base is greater than my total army supply. Yeah, because I probably have a planetary. I feel like maybe I should be a little bit more frugal here. Say if it's greater than 90% of my army supply. Okay, so yeah. I guess this is it, right? Wait, just get my bases. Target acquired. Yeah, get my bases only gets my base, so I don't need this. No, I do need that part. Okay. So if any of my bases have an enemy army supply within 15 range that's greater than 90% of my total army supply. Yeah. Target acquired. Then I want to free up this Banshee and Raven to come defend. So let's go back to that manager, wherever the heck it is. What am I doing again?
Uh, brain's turning off. That's why I write notes. <laughs> Don't add creep clearing when base is under attack. Oh, I know why I separated this. Because I want to handle it at the uh, this level as well. Although, I guess I could do it from the manager. I'm not sure which is better. Should I have the Banshee object remove itself, or should I have the manager remove the Banshee object? Tough to say. Okay, so so far I've only marked this variant, this boolean, but I'm not doing anything with it. Well, by returning, I'm not adding more Target objects. Acquired. But I should probably also remove the existing ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is what I wanted. So let's remove the Banshee. If the Banshee's removed, the Raven will remove itself. What was etc. What other logic should I have with these creep clearing guys in terms of adding and removing them? Obviously, only adding it versus Zerg. Only adding them if their health meets a certain threshold. Bringing them up when I'm dying. Creep tumor kill report. Yeah, that'd be handy, huh? I wouldn't be able to distinguish who killed it. Well, maybe. I could say, like, if a tumor died near my Banshee, then I'll give the credit to my Banshee. It could just be that something else killed it nearby, but good enough. Uh, how did I do that for my Banshee report? How do I even see when enemy units die? Let's go hunting. Print kill report. We got something called kills. Add kill. That's never used. That must be this one. On enemy unit death. Oh, 
Oh, on unit destroyed works for enemy units. <laughs> Did not know that. Interesting. I mean, obviously at one time I knew this, but just looking at the nastiness of this, this was, must have been when I first started coding. Turn on trolling of game is all but over. Nice. Uh, okay, let's do a... Maybe I'll set up another switch might need in the future. Eh. Screw it. If... So if the unit that died is a creep tumor. And I'll call a static method over here. Well, do I want like a game report or... No, probably for each Banshee kill. Like, does each Banshee get its own little tally of how many tumors it killed? Or should I just keep a tally for the entire game and log it somewhere? I guess it's kind of interesting to see it in-game chat. Let's do it for each Banshee, I guess. So each Banshee object should have this method. So for each uh, Banshee Creep Clearing guy we got, if um, the distance between this Banshee and Let's see between the banshee and the unit. Let's see. Banshee shoot from six, but then before the missile lands, the banshee might have moved away. So we'll say seven. Seven and a half to be safe. So if the tumor dies and the, and the creep clearing banshee is within seven and a half range of that tumor, we're going to credit the kill to that banshee. Uh, yeah, there's only going to be one. Let's, uh, this is fine for us to begin with.
Okay, and then we'll add one to the tumor counts. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so those are the three ways the banshees will be removed. In all three cases, I'll do a tumor report. And for this, we can log it. And we can chat it. Uh, yeah, I'll do public chat. Okay. And I got an error somewhere. Tumor kills report. Uh, did we finish this? Remove clip curing when base is under attack. Yes. Uh, 
All right. Let's build this and try it against Eris. The Banshee's killed so many times, take it away. Hmm, yeah, I used to do that with my cloak with my Banshee harass. I think it should be pretty safe though. Because I'm just kind of hovering at the edge of creep and I'm running away from damage and I have often have cloak. Depending on the build, I may have cloak and speed. I think it's okay to keep it going all game long. But something we might have to add in the future. That, hey, if I keep getting wrecked sending out this Banshee creep harasser, I should stop sending it out. But yeah, this uh, tumor kill report is a perfect way of deciding whether to Deciding when my banshee's getting wrecked all the time. You know, my banshee's dying after like one or two tumors each time. Although, and of course, it matters whether the banshee died or whether I just sent it home for repairs or sent it home to defend. It's really the amount of deaths and the amount of tumors killed that should decide whether I should keep doing this or not. Yeah, I'm going to do the tumors killed based on where the Banshee is. Because it's kind of starting from, the starting point is where is the a tumor died. So if I'm going to assign that to this creep clearing, then if that tumor died, it has to be near the Banshee. Because the Raven's not killing any of them. Yeah, well, I just have like the versus humans version of Eris, which is not very good. But it does spread creep, which is more than I can say for um, the Blizzard AI, which is important for testing this. Okay, let's start by running the bot versus the Blizzard AI. And while we're doing that, I will get the versus Eris ready to go. I seen Swapper might mess with this, I'm not sure. Yes, many years ago, I was a comp sci major. And then I worked for maybe three or four years as a programmer. And then I took like a, over a decade off from programming, never touched a line of code. And recently, I've been trying to get back into it. Did some side projects, including this one. And got a full-time job as a Java developer again. But this project itself is like the evolution of my coding all in one project. <laughs> Starting off with like, how the hell do you do an if statement in a loop again? <laughs> to like more advanced design principles later on. Pro gamer, programmer. You know, the one always got me was the word uh, 
people would always write on Reddit like, Huck has resigned. And it's like, okay, has he resigned from his team? Or has he re-signed with his team, you know? People... <laughs> That's always the most confusing thing with pro players. It's like they either quit the team or they extended their contract. Basically the, meaning the opposite of each other. All right, that's uh, Eris. I don't care about that window so much. Minimize that one. This is me against Eris, and this is me against the in-game AI, which for some reason doesn't let you click on the minimap. The dash is important. True, but this is Reddit. You can't even get people to spell correctly, let alone add punctuation marks and <laughs> click anything that's not alphanumeric. I can't remember what I did for the AI. I think I debug spawned a bunch of tumors here and a bunch of tumors here, but I think the Zerg is too stupid to spread them. So that's all we're going to get to test. But what do we add? The Banshee, when it can see the tumor and it's near the edge of the creep, it will enter the creep to kill the tumor and it should enter towards the tumor. That's something we added near the beginning of the stream. I also want to see if my bot is a little bit better at maybe like terrain like this. It won't be able to pass because it's wide, but I think it should be able to like go over a cliff edge like this. I'm trying to keep my advantage off creep, but also I don't want it like floating through the dead space here and then ending up in his main base following the edge of the creep there. So I'm trying to st like stay on pathable terrain, end off creep, and that's more likely to stay at the edge of the creep on the map. Alright, there's a Banshee, but he's not in creep clearing mode yet because I don't have a Raven. Oh, now it's in creep clearing mode. This is a raven. <laughs> I'm not sure why it gets stuck like that. Let's put a breakpoint somewhere. In the meantime, let's see what's going on versus Eris. Uh. Yeah, it's kind of a problem. It is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to respect terrain as it circles around, but now, now, now it's just circling the terrain. <laughs> All right. Did I breakpoint this in time for the other one? Uh, yeah, it's still stuck here. So 
So that'd be Banshee Creek clear, and it's going to be somewhere in the uh, movement. This is expected behavior going around this thing. It's obviously bad, but it's expected at least. So there's one of those spinning around in circles up here that I didn't really understand. That's so trying to head towards the Zerg enemy main base. I do see the fact that I'm looking so far away. Yeah, these are all valid. That's so trying to go along this edge here. But then it can, so push it back up. Hmm. I think it doesn't go in there. Okay. I see the problem. The sign of this matters, of the angle difference. So 
So when this is false, I'm adding 25. So I want to do it when this is less than Is it this? I need to switch the sign. False. I'm adding 25, so I'm adding 25. The difference is weighing the negatives. No, but then I can't just say greater than. Um, no, I can. This will be weighing the negatives, and then I multiply by negative 1 to bring it back to the positive, and then I say, is it greater? Okay. I think this might help. Whee. I really think this through here. So when I'm dodging clockwise, when I hit the creep, I want to go to the right. So an is dodge clockwise is uh, false, then I want to turn to the left. So I should be going around the left here. Then this is backwards, isn't it? This dodge clockwise. Going to the right. So that'd be a negative. Negative angle. And then I bring it back. To bring it back, it'd have to be positive. I feel like I'm making a mess of this. <laughs> How did it work before if I had this backwards?
His damage clockwise is false. God damn it. Everything's backwards. I had everything backwards and it worked because everything was inversed to what it should be. I could just name the variable is dodge counterclockwise. It would have made more sense, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's try this out. debug this a little further. Let's draw some more stuff. So towards target A what? Target position is forty three one hundred. Forty three Well that's the problem. It's trying to get to here. That's why it's spinning in circles because it's already at its destination. Why is it trying to get to here? It should be trying to get way over here.
Oh. I'm setting it equal to the raven position. If the raven's far away. Oh no, I'm just always setting it to the raven position. Yeah, that's a bug. Okay, I only want to fly, have the banshee fly towards the raven when the raven's far away. I'm guessing I'm right on top of the raven right now. Yeah, they're literally right on top of each other. If they're greater than, how close should they keep to each other? Five, I guess. Six, five. I think I need to restart it. This is a change I need, though, the signed diff. Uh, bot tournament's going on right now. We made the group of, made the final eight. And it runs every Thursday on ES Champ YouTube channel. And I guess my bot plays every week now. Now the group stages are over. So we got Dominion Dog up next, who is... My bot is better then, but he's a tricky bot and the tricky bot author, and he might come up with something that beats me. So he's something to worry about. And then the next week after that, we will most likely be playing Negative Zero, who is last season's champion and the number two bot on the ladder, which will be very difficult. And if we get past him, we'll be likely facing Eris in the finals, who will be who is the number one bot on the ladder with a 94% win rate. So we got our work cut out for us. Target is the Raven. Did I do something wrong? I might have. Uh, if there's a valid tumor nearby, we go towards the tumor. We get the support raven. We get its position. We check to see if the position 
is greater than five away from the banshee. Otherwise, no, yeah. So only if it's greater than five away from the banshee do we move towards the raven. Otherwise, we fall into this code, which will target the enemy main base position. That's an old message, yeah. Oh, you, you spotted the issue before I did, huh? Nice. But it's always good to double check things anyways. Uh, what do we got? Viking, what am I? Oh, there we go. The red dots are kind of how it uh, looks for a new position. I'm not sure if it, well, I guess that's technically not deep on creep. Because it is near the edge of the creep. Uh, now it doesn't know how to find its way off of creep, which is kind of hilarious. Okay, maybe it's going too deep on creep, or maybe I need to extend how far away I'm seeking to find a way out. I think we can edit both those values a little bit. Uh, let's look a little bit further away to find a safe spot. What am I doing? We look up to 18 range away. Eighteen's pretty far. This should probably be bigger, though. Let's extend that. And let's maybe not go as deep on to creep. So we had a method... Yeah, so we're allowing ourselves to go like 12 range on the creep. Let's maybe cut that back to 10. All right, all the creep tumors are gone. <laughs> let's uh, let's get a bot that actually spreads creep. Let's put this up against Eris. Only problem is you can't debug versus Eris. Okay. I know the perfect bot on the ladder to try this up, try this against too. There's a bot that spreads creep like at an insane rate. Seven minute mark, he's covered the entire map if you don't do anything about it. The Zerg version of Xena. Okay, jar pile. Don't need to clear creep close to enemy bases. I don't mind, right? As long as my bot is staying, as long as my units are staying safe. Like if I can safely walk up next to a hatchery and kill a creep tumor that happens to be next to the hatchery, might as well do it. 
as long as my bot's smart enough not to walk into danger and to get out of danger. A good problem to have with this is if my bot actually gets so good at clearing creep that there's no creep tumors left. Then that'll give me a first world problem of having to release my creep clearing units because they have nothing to do. <laughs> You might see this number here bouncing around a lot, the workers. That's because each worker is individually microed to mine faster. Kind of doing like a shift command into the minerals and into the command center to remove the deceleration that happens. Same with the gas. Only problem is when I get close to the enemy base. I some sometimes my bot, my bench will kind of like wander in here. He's like, "Look, I'm at the edge of creep." As he like wanders into the enemy base, it's like, "No, that's not no, not what I meant by the edge of creep." <laughs> I kind of want you staying outside of that. That's why I'm trying not to like fly into these dead zones. I'm on the fence whether I want my Banshee build to fly into unpathable terrain like this. Like, I definitely don't want it flying in here. But at the same time, I don't want it getting caught on, like, just, like, some random thing in the middle of the map like this. Maybe I'll play StarCraft 2 after this. Final bot submission is on Sunday. I do have a bunch of things I want to put in my bot. But it's after midnight right now, so I don't want to work on it. And I'm also not tired, so I feel like I could play some messy 2 The nice thing about these little harass aliens is they go clockwise and counterclockwise around the map. And they give me a lot of information about what expansion bases he has. Otherwise, in my bot, just might assume my opponent's on two bases all game long when he really has six. Well, that's just terrible. So obviously those changes to the plus and negative signs I did was not correct. <laughs> Why don't we just undo those all together since that didn't seem to, well, no, the sign is important though. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I can't debug this. I'm looking at the wrong window. Yeah. 
definitely one of those negative signs is wrong. Should definitely not be wandering on your creep like this. All right. Play against the local bot again. I guess I can at least spawn some more creep tumors for uh, this local bot since he's an idiot. Two, three, that would be the third base. All right, next time I run, there'll be creep tumors as third, fourth, and fifth base. Uh, sorry, which one do I want? This one. It's still building up. Yeah, we coded everything I wanted to very quickly. I'm still just having issues with the movement of my Banshee. If you're here for the nightmare of my last coding stream, the issue was every trigonometry method in Java expects angles and radians, and I was giving it angles and degrees. So basically every time I did like any sort of calculation, it was like miles off. And of course I assumed the problem was in my own logic. I didn't assume I, I was call, like using the, the, meth, the Java methods wrong. I thought I was just uh, doing the math wrong. Okay, I'm dodging clockwise. When I hit the creep, I'm turning to the right, which would be turning a negative angle. So this will be a negative angle. Shit. OK, 
Can't remember how this works. All right, so now, now it's trying to fly towards Wait, which window is it? Banshee's trying to fly towards the Raven. Which just spawned. But it's getting those crazy commands. <laughs> so it's not going to get there very easily. Make these higher. So I can see them. All right, the white is where I wanted to go to, but it couldn't, so it rotated this way and ends up going towards the blue. So right now, dodge clockwise is false, so it should be turning to the left. But it's not. It's turning to the right. I think I made this method worse. <laughs> False, so the angle should be getting bigger. It's false, the angle should be getting bigger. What? Counterclockwise, the angle gets bigger. That's where I started. I'm trying to get over here. So it's rotating. It's rotating in the right direction. No, wait. Turning over here and it's clockwise is false. So it's no, it should be going this way. Fuck me. Let's just go back to what we had. Apparently I can't picture it in my head right now. Oh, wait. Probably just using this method wrong. Uh, 
uh, chance in hell I'm going to understand this. <laughs> Probably barely, barely understood when I wrote it the first time. But I'm guessing is this backwards? So right now it's flying towards that. So the angle difference should be like zero. What? The angle difference is 1.14. I multiply it by negative 1. No, I'm multiplying 25 by negative 1. You idiot, Catrock. God damn it. Okay, let's see what this does. Well, it definitely should be flying towards us, right? So 120, so it does go inside that. Angle difference is negative 123, so we want to add 25. There's so much trouble with this code. It's probably a better way to do this algorithm. Of course, once I get it working, I'll never have to look at it again. <laughs> Thirty-nine sixty-three.
I don't know. It seems opposite, so I'm just going to switch these back and see what happens. Put it back the way I had it. My brain says it's wrong, but it was working correct before, and now it's not, so... Yeah, it definitely looks like it's going towards the the raven while trying to stay um, on pathable terrain. And now they're close, and it heads off towards. Okay, this is looking better. Hopefully, you can go over this. Yeah, be good. Yeah, that ten range to get off creep is uh probably too small. Looks like I was trying to exit the creep a few times there. Got close to the edge of the screen. Now it turns back the other way. Perfect. Does see the creep tumors since it's safe, it's allowing itself to go in. I did teach it to just kind of shoot at anything when it's available. So if it's running by a zergling, it'll just pot shot the zergling as it's going. And now it's having issues. I think it should be going like this. Oh, it saw these tumors. Okay. They went, it got close to the edge of the map, so changing directions again. Close the edge of the map, so it's changing directions again. I think it's working. Looks pretty good to me. And the fact that I'm looking so far ahead means it can go over these terrains sometimes. It's kind of random when it does, but... Alright, let's throw it against Eris. The other bot author stream. Uh, there was a great video on ray casting by someone. Um, yeah, let me go to my YouTube. I'm not sure they stream, but uh, there's definitely videos out there. Problem is, I haven't cleaned up subscriptions in a long time. How do I actually look at who I'm subscribed to? All oh, right, here. AI Arena stream is on Twitch and YouTube. That's just bot games being observed by another bot. Uh, this guy is one. And this is like every YouTube channel I've subscribed to in the last 20 years. I'm not sure if I'll recognize the name of the other ones. Oh, remember tomorrow. <laughs> this is before Destiny had his own YouTube channel. This guy would put up Destiny's content for him.
I'm hoping if I just see it, I'll recognize. The name, but I don't think so. Oh, I know another way to find it. Just go to the AI Arena Discord. And there's a YouTube channel. Loco Pollo. That's going to be another one. Laughing games sometimes, uh, cast spot games. So does Hearthstone and uh, Euthermal. Periodically. Super Losa. Oh, maybe it's a private video or did you get rid of the video? It still exists. It's kind of interesting. Like you mapped train is impossible for impossible for bots to figure out, but oops, I can't go that big again. Uh, shoot. What's happening? So he kind of created regions and then he uses the midpoints of those regions and that's how his units kind of go from place to place. He paths between the center of each region. So it's kind of cool. His bot's kind of able to, you know, not just like A, move towards the enemy base, but he can find different paths and different angles to attack in on. And this bot's at like the very bottom of the competitive ladder. And <laughs> he's doing like such advanced things. But uh Yeah, this would be a good channel. And this would be a good channel for bot related videos. If you're actually interested in making your own bot, there's a lot better uh sources in these YouTube channels too. There's more um, tutorial videos. There's also um, do those just connect together? Whoops. Sorry. Can't do that. Let me fix that. Separate chats. There's a semi-famous YouTube channel for programming. And this guy created a uh, machine learning. Yeah, this guy's videos have like six figure views. And yeah. Yeah, about eight months ago, he did a four-part series on creating a machine learning bots in Python. But for helpful tutorials on how to get started and stuff, like start by joining the Discord, and then that can come that can point you to all the different resources. Um which I guess I should probably share if I'm going to say that out loud. Uh... Yeah, there we go.
Okay. Back to it. What the heck was I doing? I was deploying it, right? To try versus Eris. I think. Try a different map just for funsies. Nope. I just remember Eris doesn't work on those new maps because I have a very old version of Eris. Uh, 2000 atmospheres. Don't remember. What's the oldest map here? Berlingrad? 2000 atmosphere is pretty old. No, those regions are not hard coded. That's what's impressive. Um, on one of those channels, I sim the artificially intelligent one. He did a video maybe like a month ago that was really good about ray casting. And I think Super Losa did something very similar to that. Maybe exactly the same as that. But it's a way to like analyze the map. You kind of solve where choke points are, which is way more difficult than you would ever think. Because as a human, you just look and you say, hey, there's a choke point. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to solve that programmatically. And then from the choke points, he defines regions based on those choke points. And then you use the, each, the center of each of those regions for pathing algorithms. You'll see like, okay, get from this place to this place, but only path through safe regions or something. And <laughs> it'll create a way to get to a certain spot. Or you can kind of use it however you want once you got it up there. Yeah. I tried to like figure out this. Just this. Just just like where is the ch chokiest choke point outside my natural? It is a pain in the ass. Still never solved it. What I was doing is I was looking at like every single cell and I was saying like how close is it to a non pothable cell? So here it would say like one, and here it would say two, and here it would say three. So I'd have all these like cells, and, and, and within those cells, I could see how far away they were from the edge, which feels like a really good starting point, but I still couldn't get from that to, you know, to drawing a line of like the chokiest choke point. Like even the concept of this cell being on one side and this cell being on the other side. I couldn't even like figure out that logic. I started to look at all the highest numbers and kind of like zone them and look for areas where there's very few high numbers. I'm like, okay, that must be near choke or I, I don't remember what I did but I gave up on it but then when I saw a ray casting video I was like okay I was on the right track I was just uh you know six six more steps away <laughs> of complication that I would never figure out on my own but apparently this is like I guess common pathing issue for if you're like building games and stuff people have solved it in the past All right, so we got a banshee. Okay. 
Creeping on the way out of this starport. I realize with this launcher, I have to make myself player two, otherwise I can't click on anything. Like on this one, no matter how much I click, I can't see it. This one's annoying. I got a fight with the bot, which is also selecting things. But if I spam click something, I can, I can at least see what, get an idea of what's inside, what's building from it. Like here, if I click it enough, I can see there's a cyclone in there. Uh, oh, is it happening? Something weird's going on with the Banshee. I got an idea what it is. All right, I can't break point. Yeah, I think I know what it is. I think I have code that's trying to grab this banshee and use it to uh, to clear the broad zergling here. So my creep clearing algorithm keeps grabbing this raven and putting it back into into this job, and then my other code is grabbing the raven and putting it into this job, and they just keep fighting with each other. I was able to land it, yeah. Now that I'm able to land it, now they're fine. Ooh, that's not good. Why? Should I only go back to my five degrees and then... I think it's one of those negative signs again. I definitely had it working the other day. It was able to, it, even if it was going the opposite direction of the enemy base, it would still be able to move around the, the creep. I got an idea. I think there is a built in method called There it is. And I haven't written like a basic for loop in years. <laughs> I should have just a counter.
All right, let's just build like 20 random creek tumors on the map at random locations. Uh, I guess it has to be palatable too. Or placeable. Well, no, just palatable because you can build creep tumors on ramps. All right, get a random location. That location is away from my main base and it's pathable. Then we increment by one and we build a creep tumor for the enemy. All right, this should be good for testing now. Now I'll have a good amount of creep tumors on the map. Well, rather than away from my base, let's do it towards the enemy base. Try to keep it on his side of the map. Enemy. It's less than 20. 150. Meanwhile in, meanwhile, in Stupidville, <laughs> my Apache is still being dumb. I think there's something I could do to help debug this, too. All right, make those red dots. Let's number them so I can see the order of the of checking things. Exposition color. Oops, I scroll up and chat. Like, man, no one's chat for a long time. <laughs> Was he looking?
Yeah, I, I can picture what's wrong with the with the bots and that other over here or whatever. Which one is it? This one. Well, now it's probably fixed itself because other things have happened to clear out the creep. Where's my? Uh... That's all part of the main army. There it is. Yeah, it's, it's turning the wrong way. I don't know what it's doing, honestly. It's playing into danger and stuff. It's not supposed to be doing that, that's for sure. Maybe that wasn't even the Banshee? Yeah, it wasn't being spammed. Spam clicked, so it was probably a wrong Banshee. It wasn't trying to stay close to the Raven either. Wait, what? Why is there creep tumors in my base? I think I, uh, hang on a sec. That creep tumor spawning code was not good. Find a random location. If the random location is positive and the distance to enemy main base position is less than 150. Maybe 150 is going too far. I mean, that covers the entire map. Yeah, I think it does. Say 100. I think a typical size map is about 150 by 150. So 100 towards one corner should be about two thirds of the map. I would think. Does he bot do the chores Thor cheese build? No, unfortunately not. That sort of thing with a lot of technical decision making is not where bots excel. If you want to build a bot, you need to imagine that every single unit is being controlled by an individual Maru, right? You have Maru, a Maru designated to control one unit, and another unit is designated to control by another Maru. So, unbelievable unit control. But all of these Maru's are being told what to do by a Bronze League player. That is the life of a bot. <laughs> so you want to rely on like crazy micro, but very bad decision making. Well, the AI is actually spreading creep. That's cool. I didn't know it could do that. There have been bots that have done similar stuff though, where they build like a barracks outside your base and then try to float it in and do a hidden location and start building up units. There was a bot called um, Chaos Bot. He would have like the. He has some of the most in, uh, entertaining games. Terrible bot. Because he does like the stupidest stuff and not like stupid but effective, but just stupid but stupid. <laughs> but it made like uh made for some really entertaining games. <laughs> Including stuff like uh trying to float barracks into your base.
Okay. While we wait, let's fix this creep code again. I think I want more creep tumors, but I want them clustered more on his side of the map. So let's go up to 30 creep tumors and let's knock this 100 down to, say, 70 for next time. Because I don't want, like, creep islands. That's the. Uh, that's going to confuse my bot. And I, I think that's okay that it confuses my bot because creep is never spread in islands. Although one thing Eris does is he uh, he flies in a, a dropper lord around with a queen inside and the dropper lord is pooping creep. So every time he stops the dropper lord and drops out the queen, the queen can drop a creep tumor. It's like a new way to spread creep faster. Uh, where's... Do I even have a banshee yet? There's the banshee. Oh, and there's the... Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is where it wants to go to, and these are the attempts until it gets here, and then that's the final position it chooses. So right now it's going clockwise. Yeah, so it's searching towards clockwise, which is correct. Um, towards the target, and then when I Readjust like a yellow, I guess. Let's see if this adjustment is going the right direction, too. So that's where I started. Wait, what's yellow? No, that's not what I want to see. Um, that's just towards the target. I don't care about that.
That's what I want to see. Drawing it out makes it so much easier to visualize. I don't know why I didn't do this last stream when I was stuck. Wait, what? <laughs> That's how you started at the Banshee. Why did I type in? I did something wrong here. Our position, this is the position I need to change. Banshee two. Okay. Third time's a charm. So the white is where I started off with. Move it towards the target, that's correct. And then go back this way. That seemed right. It looks like periodically it's not even going into this method. I think that's what the issue is. I know, and that's because it's shooting. That's fine. All right, it's always trying to dodge this way around. Like the white is where I start. I always bend it back a little bit towards the target I'm trying to go towards. And then I start looking for safe positions going the opposite direction. And I think that's what keeps me fluidly going one direction around the creep. And I guess that was working against Eris, right? There's just a position where I got stuck in where it, uh,
I'm not sure we're going to be able to replicate it. But it seemed like when it got stuck, it was kind of like if it went towards the target, it was very safe. Right there. Just doing it, I think. Yeah, I think when moving towards the, the final destination, when that direction is very safe, it just goes that way, which is not what we want. I think I might have saw it doing that a second ago. Where is it even going right now? It's he's a creep tumor. Is that what's going towards? Technically it's visible, even though it's in the fog of war. Maybe that's what it was doing. It was some crate tumor is getting revealed somewhere on the map, and then my banshee is just like, yep, I'm going for it. Because so I don't actually check how close the creep tumor is to my banshee. That's an issue. See if we can fix that. Uh, is creep tumor in range? Yeah, I got the closest creep tumor to the banshee. Yeah, but I don't actually check to see how close it is to the banshee. Check to see how deep it is on creep. I check to see if I can, if my attack position, once I get close to it, will be safe. But I should also check to make sure that the, uh, get distance between closest tumor. How close to the banshee? Like 11 or 12? Say 11. I have a feeling this wasn't the issue though, but it's another issue. Let me see what happens. What if it's really safe to go towards the enemy target? Does it skip all the previous stuff I had? So there's no movement command up here, right? Treat health targets can move. Should cloak.
Yeah, so this method is literally the only movement to do. I think I see it. And I hate this method though. <laughs> Especially now that it's full of all these like drawing lines and stuff. Okay. Target acquired. So my initial Start by moving towards the target. Difference. Oh, maybe that other fix I did did fix this. So if the previous angle of movement is very close to the same movement as moving towards the target, then I just move towards the target. So I'm guessing it failed here before. I think it'll work now. If the difference between these angles is large, Still using the previous angle just with a an offset back towards the target. I think it's fixed. Let's try this again. All right, we're running it against Blizzard AI, and we'll run it against Eris. an AI code your bot. That kind of exists now in the programming world. GitHub, which is the place where 90% of, of projects use for version control and, and save it their repository, has a coding assist AI tool, which will 
read your code and try to find mistakes. You can also write the name of a method and it'll try to code that method for you. <laughs> Just by the title of the method name. And it's it's not bad. You would think it would be terrible. <laughs> it would be like uh, all over the place. But yeah, it's not bad actually. Like you could write a method name like, um, I don't know, like find largest value in list that takes in a list. And it, just by that name, it'll, it'll write the code for you inside. So there's machine learning AIs that are, are writing code. <laughs> to some degree. You know what Eris doesn't do versus humans is speed mine. I'm just noticing. I don't know why not. Why not? It's actually, speed mine is not actually high APM. And if your bot's skipping frames, which they do in real time, that's not a big deal either because it's like queued up commands. It's not commands you have to give on a very specific frame. All right, what do we got? Which this one and there we I guess did I walk you? Can't remember if I walked my dog. It's 1.40 a.m. If I believe myself to be responsible, I think I already did. But I don't have a memory of actually doing it. Oh yeah, it started to rain. We had to run. I remember now. It's like burning the corpse. <laughs> All right, we got a banshee. Is there a raven on the way? Raven on the way. And there's at least some creep on the map. All right, Raven comes out, Banshee moves towards the Raven. Yes, till they get close, and then they go together. Nice. Looking good. I'm still not sure about the terrain thing, man. Should I be flying over terrain or? It's like all this wasted time when I'm like sticking to pathable terrain for a flying unit. But then there's all these issues when I'm flying over chasms and Will I go after that other one? I will. And that one. Huh. Now it's stuck. This isn't glitching out. This is just like if you're trying to stay on pathable terrain that has no creep, this is your options. <laughs> I'm literally stuck in a corner.
It did seem to travel too far on the creep, further than I wanted it to. Actually, this is kind of the scenario we wanted to find, isn't it? Let's see what's going on versus Eris. Then we'll come back to that one. Uh, the, I gotta fix that. Someone's trying to steal the raven. There must be like a... Yeah, like a bro zergling here. So you got a conflicting code. One piece of code is trying to take the raven away from the banshee clearer to clear the expansion. Once I get a second raven, it might solve it. Yeah, I can't land. It's definitely what's happening. It's like one frame it gets a command to go over here, the other frame it gets a command to follow this banshee. And normally that can't happen because they're their own objects, but there's like an emergency code where like whatever your ravens are doing, grab one of them and make an object for clearing an expansion. And then I have the exact same code for for this. So now it's kind of stuck. Ooh, I did want to Okay, I think we're good now. Nope, still getting stolen away. Wait, this got released. To go back home, but it doesn't look like this raven knows that it was released. So his health got low. So it removed itself. 
And what does the raven object do? Why is it still following that guy? It remembers the Banshee. Yeah, I can't remember this. Because it may not be the Banshee, the Creep Clearing Banshee forever. So each step I'll just grab it again. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Now we do need to keep it as a field class level. Um, I guess we just need to redefine it every step. Yeah, I guess assu I assumed it would only ever die. Or why don't we just save the... No, it's dumb. Yeah, we'll just do this every step. I can't do it like this. It would have to be um Why can't I do that? That works. Oh, right. It's got to be a private method. Okay, map um, dot or else. Wow. Just 
it's only one. So we got the first one, we map it. What else? No. Okay. So every step will reset the Banshee to whatever the Banshee cl creep clear guy is. And then the very first thing we need to do in case it's null, the Banshee's null, then we're removing the Raven. Okay. Let's go back to what is happening in the uh, this game. The Eris game is done, which is fine. But I broke point at a point here. Right. So up there. Yeah, so white is where it started with. We were going to backtrack towards the uh, end position. And then it's just going to keep rotating until it finds a point that's not on creep, which is up here. And the blue line is the final destination. Now this looks like a problem. White is the starting point, which is correct. Yellow should only be 20 degrees from this white, though. No, sorry. Got my colors mixed up. Yeah, white is the starting point. Oh, because I haven't drawn it yet. Never mind. There we go. So white is the starting point. No, yeah, the yellow is so wrong. This yellow line should be like here. So that's why it ends up back over there. Okay, there's a mistake. So white's the starting point, go back towards yellow, do this until you find it. So that's going to be the new white. Okay. Okay, next frame is going to be a perfect test frame. Previous angle is 104. Yep, so that's that blue line. Angle of the target is 261. One oh five. Angle of the target. Yeah, it's like two sixty one. So the angle difference is going to be big. 157. Okay. 
No, that's not right. I have a feeling this method might be wrong, which just could be why I'm always confused with the negative and positive. Right. The angle difference should be Oh, man. Yeah, this method may not be what I want. Do I actually have to try to understand this? <laughs> I want a positive number, but only in one direction. So if the angle is between zero and 180 degrees, that would be from three o'clock to 12 o'clock. or between or the difference minus 180 that'd be here and minus 360 right so that's both on the north man So in this scenario, I wanted to return this value. So basically positive 100 and around positive 200. Previous angle is 104.
261. Yeah, so 104 plus 360 minus 261. Yeah, so it should be like 205. That's giving me the opposite. It's giving me this angle. Yeah, it's just giving me the smallest angle. This one's small, but I want this big one. This angle to that angle in a specific direction, and then an absolute value of it. That means I need a new trig method. Yeah, the direction's important. Like clockwise or counterclockwise. It's counterclockwise, I go that way. I don't know. How do I write that? Let's start with some examples, I guess. There's this method of coding where you write the tests, and by writing the tests, it actually creates the algorithm for you almost. So I need some sort of like get angle. So the first angle is at zero and the next one's at 90 and um, and clockwise is true. And it should return 270 degrees. But if we're going counterclockwise, then it's just 90 degrees. And if we pick some random numbers here. 25 and 330 and true if it's clockwise it should be 25 and 55 right it's so 25 and then 360 minus 30 And if it's counterclockwise, it should be 315. So let's write a method <laughs> that will uh, come up with these answers for me. Let's do one more 
example, say 145 and One hundred. All right, so one forty five, one hundred. If it's true, then it's one forty five towards one hundred in the clockwise direction, which would be forty five. Otherwise, it's going to be the other direction, which is uh. 215 plus 100, which is 315. <laughs> Yeah, directional angle difference. Well, directional is implied. Angle difference. Boolean is clockwise. So, I think we could start by Let's see, we got a circle. So let's say this is like angle one. And we say this is angle two. And this is zero degrees. <laughs> so we get this ang amount and this amount and this amount, this amount. Oh, of course, one and two might be in different positions. I feel like we need to grab all these different values, all the angles between between these three lines. And then we need to use them in different ways, depending on the direction and where they're located. Or we can see if we can Google a solution for this. Get directional angle between two lines. <laughs> I'm going to find the angle between two lines.
Well, that's another way to do it, right? I got two angles. I guess we're not getting the angle between two lines, actually. We're getting the difference between two angles. Not the smallest difference between two angles. It's directional based. I don't even, as far as I can read, that's not even answering the question it says in the title. I have two angles of reference, the compass. This is almost exactly what I'm doing. Calculate and return the distance. Extract one from the other, you get the absolute value, mod 360. It's always going to be less than 360, so I'm not sure why they're doing mod 360. Oh, this looks familiar to what I was, I was doing in my code when I understood what I was doing. It's greater than zero or less than 180, or oh, that's not right. This is fine, the smallest angle, too, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, let's find the smallest angle. Not what I want. Mm. Okay, let me think. The answer will always be less than 360 degrees. Where's my examples? As a 
math teacher, this would be great. <laughs> hey, I was good at trig in grade 9. I haven't touched it since. <laughs> but I don't even think I need to do any trig here, because I already have the angles. Well, let's just do it the really hard way. Let's just throw up different scenarios, and then maybe it'll come together as some sort of easier to understanding argument. So if I'm moving clockwise and uh, angle one is greater than angle two, it's greater and moving clockwise and it's greater than the answer is just going to be angle one minus angle two. So if angle two is greater than angle one, then it's going to be angle one plus 360 minus angle 2, right? Target acquired. It'd be this plus that. This. So that's angle 1, basically, like 45 degrees. And then this would be 360 minus whatever that is. So it's a 185, so it'd be like 175 that way. Yeah. Actually, I guess this could be an answer. There's only four scenarios. I'm trying to figure out how to do it all in one one line, but technically this will work. But maybe once I do it, it'll make more sense to me. So now if we're going counterclockwise, I guess technically you don't need this else statement because we'll return from the previous one. So if angle one's bigger than angle two, so if we're starting here and we're going counterclockwise, so then it's 360 minus angle one plus angle two. Okay. Otherwise, Angle two is greater than angle one. So that's basically this scenario here. And we're going counterclockwise. Then it would just be angle two minus angle one. All right, let's try it out. So if I put in 0, 90, and true, then it should return 
270. Come on, build on the fly for me, please. We'll just kill it and start it again. Two seventy. One forty five and one hundred. And true is supposed to be forty five. Yep. And pulse is three fifteen. Twenty-five, three thirty, and false should be three o five. Okay, so this works. It's got to be a less stupid way of doing it, though. <laughs> So for clockwise and counterclockwise, I'm basically doing the exact same thing, but I'm swapping angle one for angle two. Is that true? No, that's not true. I'll give this like two minutes because what I have works. I just, I know I can collapse this down to one line. There's got to be a clever way to use all these variables to, to determine the algorithm or to determine the formula. Probably another one of those scenarios where if it's radians, it's way easier too. Actually, no, that wouldn't make a difference. Let's write everything in the same order. I don't think I can do this in Java. I don't think I can go negative then no. maybe you can. I can't even remember. <laughs>
No, I give up. Good enough. It works. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can multiply an angle by negative one. I think that's the only way. I don't think I'm... Or you can subtract an angle from something else. But I don't think I can go like this. I don't think that's allowed in Java. But this is fine. Or angle one times negative one to make it negative is fine. Anyways, let's get back to what they're whatever the hell I was trying to do originally. Uh, actually, let's get the spot running while we wait. And it was in here. So this method is not what I wanted. Previous angle towards the target. And to visualize this again. Okay, so the first time the Banshee recalculates its position, it'll hit a breakpoint, so I don't have to keep an eye on the game. What was I doing? Imagine a scenario here. That's the creep over here. Let's say that's the target position. And she is here. And it's moving that way. So that's the previous angle. Angle towards the target would be that way. And I am dodging clockwise. So I'd want to get a positive 25. So this angle is greater than 25. So where are these numbers? This is like. Uh, 
it's like 80 and this is like one about 200 so I want to get this angle is 120 I still can't visualize it. So the previous angle is 80 and the next one's going to be 120, no 200. Did I put in... No, so it's the opposite. So this would be negative. No, sorry, that's a boolean, not a number. No, it's okay. Okay, the blue is the results, that's into the previous angle. And then the yellow is basically, yeah, okay, towards the target. Angle of the target's 280, I guess the target's a creep tumor right now. Previous angle is 99, that looks great. Okay, so 280. It's probably this thing. So I want to get a value of like uh, 't get my brain processes right so it should be like 180 angle diff is 180 okay so where do we got that right and then since it was greater than wait am I multiplying by this yeah so oh I don't need this at all anymore because it's always a positive integer. So that's greater than 25, then I want to do 25 back towards the angle. So it should be like 125. Seventy-four. Fuck. Wrong way. <laughs> okay, so these are backwards. Uh, 
And then, yeah, and then that's the right search pattern. I think I finally have it. Yep, nailed it. <laughs> All right, breakpoint's back on. God damn it. Oh, I was fairly confident for a second there. All right, let's um, look here. Okay. What's yellow and what's white again? So white is what I have. Go back this way. And keep going that way until I get find target. That's right. yellow line is wrong. What is what I have? Unless I just changed directions, I might have some near the edge of the screen. No, it's still true. Yeah, the yellow line should be over here, not on this side. Angle difference of 190, about 200, that seems correct to me. I guess that fix I did was uh, backwards. I think I actually want one more line. It's probably important to know what the target is.
what's where we started go back to the yellow one end up on blue That's counterclockwise. Got down these negative signs. So I think this is right. But this was wrong. That's dodging clockwise, that's right. That's the previous one. Now the yellow's on the wrong side. It must be something stupid I'm doing here. Let's just make these one line so it's easier to read the rest of my code. So I'm dodging clockwise, so those numbers are going the correct way. the yellow and white are on the wrong side. I'm going to go there. This is where I start. I go back this way and then I rotate that way. Wait, the result should be here though. Like the next white line.
Yeah, some blues over there. So the next white line should always be where the previous blue line was. The next white line should be up here. Yeah. Okay, just double checking. Go back this way, rotate. different. Okay. All right. Right back that way, go this way. How is that the result, the blue? The result should be like, if this is six, then the next one's seven, and that should be the line right there. Because I found an answer. So why is this blue over here? And that's, for some reason, these numbers don't correspond to what my bot's actually doing. Don't tell me I made that dumb mistake. Or I'm not even printing out the... Oh boy, okay. Yeah, so the detour position is based on the angle. So I'm definitely printing that in the right place. Maybe when I finally discover the right angle and use it, I screw it up. What is this doing? Add one more angle buffer to account for chasing. I don't need to account for that. I think once I get the safe position, If there was a mistake in that code that I just deleted, then I fixed the problem. <laughs> but I'm not sure if there was a mistake in that code. Yeah, that's where it should be. Oh, there was a mistake in that code.
I mean, technically, given the situation I'm in here, I'm kind of walled in. It might be correct for it to be stuck like this. Let's get rid of the terrain constraint. So I'm still not sure whether that's a good thing or not. I see. If it's safe and it's not creep or creep timber is range. Okay. All right, now they should be able to pass over unpathable terrain. Definitely the logic of uh, when it's near the edge of the creep is not uh, not the greatest. Oh, I know what I can do to make that a little bit more accurate. It's, uh, we're running out of cube on this map. Let's restart this. Uh, set position. Yes, instead of moving right on top of the creep tumor. I'll just get within attack range of the creep tumor would be better. Um, so the Banshee's position, 
towards the tumor position. No, sorry, the tumor position towards the Banshee's position. And she shoots six, so 5.5 .5 should be safe. I was turning the suicide muscle in my brain. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where it's like, it's like, just work, damn it. I don't even want to understand this anymore. I don't want to try to figure it out. Let's just make this negative and see if it fixed it. Nope, didn't fix it. Why not? I don't care. Just work. Yeah, I enjoy the logic puzzles of programming, but I gotta say, the stuff involving geometry that I've had to put in this pod, I haven't enjoyed at all. Because the trig doesn't, definitely doesn't come to me naturally. Every time I need to, like, look it up and remember how it works and like I remember like Pythagorean theorem and, and basic stuff like that but like for this one you gotta do a cos tan squared it's like what <laughs> I don't remember this shit and when I do figure it out it stays in my brain for like an hour and then it's gone again. No tumor kills for a minute, go home and try again. Yeah. I mean, ideally, your unit, you code it in a way so you don't get stuck, I guess. <laughs> but you could code that way. Like, if I suck as a coder, then every minute, fix yourself. <laughs> but ideally, you write it in a way where you don't get stuck to begin with. There's definitely issues going, like jumping in to get those creep tumors.
but it's not looking too bad. I mean, after all the hours I put into this one little feature, I hope it wouldn't be looking bad. <laughs> It was actually more like two hours of work with six hours of trying to get this stupid banshee to move right. <laughs> but all the features themselves weren't didn't take too long to code. So that's an interesting scenario. You get something like a hydra pushes the banshee deep onto creep. And then the banshee finds safety. And then he's like, how the hell do I get out of here? Like, I'm so deep on creep, I can't find my way out again. I still gotta fix that code of with the Raven has multiple roles. That would be in the creep manager. I'm gonna get a new raven. There's something like available. Yes, yeah, so I guess make sure they're not. Mm. In another role already. Mm, filter two, so when it doesn't contain that. And I guess I should do the same thing for the Banshee. Don't grab a Banshee that's already in like a harassment role or something. Okay, that should solve the wiggling raven problem. <laughs> no, it's the Hellions and the Cyclones all trying to fight for the same position. It's like we all want to stand on that exact spot.
feels really late. What is it? 3 a.m.? Yeah. That's really late. I think it's good enough to put on the ladder. Then I'll get a lot get to see a lot of good practice games against a lot of different Zerg bots. I don't think there's anything glaringly horrible with it. There's probably some adjustments that need are required, but I think this last fix is the big one. Make sure we don't have a raven assigned to two different roles. Actually, what's the... The other one. Uh, enemy... That was like expansion... Expansion clearing. Yeah, looks like the expansion clearing is smart enough to Okay, yeah, they're both smart enough. What's going on? Where's the magic? There we go. I think one thing I definitely need to do is not say stay so close to the creep though. I think it's a major disadvantage the fact that my banshee is visible to the enemy. If I stay just a little bit off creep, then for a good portion of the time, the banshee won't be visible. Yeah. Oh, here's it. Okay, so that got released because it was low in health. So this Banshee is not is doing its own thing, which is fine. Now there's a new Banshee. They got to, took the old Banshee's place, or this Banshee got repaired and got re-added.
<laughs> this logic is definitely too rudimentary, though. So the creep tumor has to be within 11 range of the banshee. If I draw a line from the creep tumor towards the banshee at a distance of 10, and that end of that line has creep on it, then I won't go in. So that means sometimes I go in deep because I'm starting to draw this line and it's going to be on a, it's going to be pointing somewhere that's not terrain. Creep spread is creep spreads beyond vision range, doesn't it? And vision range of StarCraft is ten. I don't remember these things. What's vision range? Oh, it says, it says for each unit, I think. Site 11. Yeah, so if the creep is fully spread, I don't think 10 is going to cut it. Each creep tumor can spawn other creep tumors within a radius of 10. So you can place the next creep tumor within 10. How far is it actually spread creep though? We'll generate creep 10 square radius around it. So the tumor position towards the banshee position at a distance of 10 that has creep, then I won't go after it. So I'm not going to go after creep tumors that are fully expanded. I think I should make this at least 11. Yeah, but the problem is like I'd say this is all creep. And my banshee is here and I see a creep tumor. Right there. And then I say, okay, let's draw a line 11 towards my banshee. And then is there creep at the end of it? And I'm like, oh, there is creep. And then I decide, okay, that means uh, that this thing is far too deep onto creep for me to go after it. But it's really not that deep onto creep. It's just because I'm not looking at like 
all this space here that's not on creep. I'm only looking at 11 towards my banshee. So it works fine if it's like, you know, the crude tumor is here and my banshee's here, then obviously the straight line is pointing out away from the creep. But sometimes the straight line is pointing towards other creep. And that's why I don't want to won't jump in sometimes. But I think the biggest issue is that 10. I think if I make these like 11, maybe an 11.5. So like this kind of rudimentary one line statement should probably be a very much more complex method checking many different things. But is this like how deep do I really want to go into it? This one line covers 90% of cases, I think. But sometimes it might make my banshee act stupid. Let's, uh, let's package this up and throw it on the ladder. I think I'm pretty happy with where it's at. Two weeks to come, but not today. In fact, I think I'll definitely leave this code where it's at and only if I notice something in going wrong in replays. In fact, we can even queue up a couple games. Let's, uh, my bot plays random builds right now, though. <laughs> it might do something stupid that has never even built a banshee. Well, Xena, I've noticed, is the best creep spreading bot now. Press three matches against that. Obviously the main thing I would like this to help against is Eris, who is the, the bot killer. By far the number one bot on the ladder. And who else can we try to against? Maybe like a, um, oops. I'm trying to think of like a, just a mediocre macro Zerg bot. County Nana. Nothing cheesy. Zoe, maybe? Let's try County Nana. Wow, so many. Yeah, every time I stop using a banshee from 
for whatever reason, if I stop using a Banshee as a creep clearing Banshee, it'll give a Banshee report. With how many tumors is killed? That was uh, someone's suggestion in chat today. It was a good one. Yeah, so we got this tumor report. We'll, I'll print this in the log and then I'll also chat it out to public chat. And this tumor nation with whether the Banshee died or not is probably good data to use to decide if maybe I should stop doing this versus certain bots or within certain games. If I just keep getting them sniped. Like, uh, I don't know. If a Zerg has like mutas and speed overseers, you're probably going to get shrecked <laughs> every time you go in there, even if you have cloak. Yeah, so I got this creep clearing manager, and this guy decides, like, um, when to create these Banshee objects and Raven objects. So basically, as long as I'm facing Zerg and I'm not currently dying, then it's always going to try to grab available Banshees and Ravens to do this. Well, one of each, we'll say. The Banshee dies, the Raven will leap it, release itself, and then it'll just kind of wait until I have a, another Banshee and Raven I can apply towards it. So, yeah, that's all this manager does right now. It won't do it if I'm dying, but other than that, it's always going to attempt to have one Banshee and one Raven on creep clearing duty. So, in the long run, this probably needs some refinement. There's probably more scenarios where I don't want to be doing this. Oh man, Negative Zero is up late too. Negative Zero lives in North America. He lives in Florida, actually. He lives the same time zone as me. So he's up at 3.30 a.m. coding his bot as well. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's game's in progress. This might be a ladder game, actually. But he's been queuing up tons of games versus me. Like, all, all these ones versus negative zero that have a dash. That's games that he's queuing up against me. He's really trying to beat my bot. Like, from, like, 7 a.m. or whatever... This is in UTC for the last three hours. He's been eight o'clock. What time is that? It's 8.30. Yeah, yeah. He's for the last three hours. He's been just queuing up games versus my bot. That's funny. I think he's, I don't think he legitimately has a secret plan to beat my bot. Because if he did, I don't think he'd be doing this just all as subterfuge. I think he's literally queuing up all these to try to get the uh, the fix he wants. I know what build he's worried about too. It's my... Um... See, it looks like he's doing really well against me. when I'm, But that's why I'm picking random builds. I'm doing specifically this build versus negative zero. Then, oh, he's trying to solve it. Yeah, it used to be like all wins. But very recently, like in those last three hours of hammering it, 
He's won four out of six. Oh, what a virgin. I think he's actually like a retired programmer. I think he's like 60 something years old, but it's hard to know. Even when he's been on the uh, stream before, he never uses a webcam. But just some, based on things he's talked about, he seems like he's been around for a while. <laughs> I do have one other build I'm good, I can use against negative zero, which I think with one improvement could be really deadly. And then this one I can do a couple improvements to as well. So he gives up when he sees the bunker. He's just trying to get out stalkers as quickly as possible. rallies about he gets a lot of stalkers really quick now <laughs> he's made massive improvement to this I remember him having like three stalkers when I had my first tank. He didn't get this many stalkers until I had two siege tanks up here. He's got solved, but I did win a couple as well. What happened when I won? Like, based on that game, it looks like he can slaughter it. I know he's been trying to calculate how to jump the bunker siege tank position. And the calculations also involves the SCVs. Kind of calculates the healing rates or the repair rates of the SCVs and what they're capable of and makes part of the decision. So I wonder how Mm, generic his calculation is like what if I just bring one more SCV would it completely throw his thing off or well we can't even see my uh, nexus here or my bunker that's a big deal but as soon as I shoot him he should be able to see it Maybe he's just trying out letting it finish. Oh yeah, well, I mean that's four new minerals down the drain, so that definitely makes things easier on me.
that I won the other game too. He let the Nexus finish. Yeah, I'm I'm just watching these to buy time until uh those games are queued up finish. I kinda wanna see. The Banshees clearing creep. Why won't the siege? So I think I'm only winning because he's letting the Nexus finish. So I can't beat negative zero in a Mac game. My bot can only play Mac, doesn't play Bio. And mech sucks versus bot, bot uh, Protoss. Cyclones are like almost completely useless, which is unfortunate. Cyclones with bot control versus humans is so good. But when you're facing bots that also have perfect micro, like the moment you lock on, they'll break the lock. And Hellbats will never get in range unless we kited to death. Widow Mines are always spotted. So with mech you basically just have siege tanks. And they're not the most mobile things. Yeah, I'm technically ahead at the moment. Nah, I'm already behind. <laughs> Guess it didn't hurt help uh, losing that. Actually, it looks like the barracks survived. But I lost the uh, factory.
can't even get in range of these stalkers. <laughs> base on two. I was even using Revelation now. Because <laughs> it was working well for Shark Bot versus my bot. Well. Not looking good. Got two days to come up to it, come up for an answer with negative zero. And the one build I had that was my really strong one is not so strong anymore. Uh, Banshee Cyclone. I lost in eight minutes. Am I about bug out or what? I think it's going for Brill Roach play. Maybe because I pulled my first Raven to clear creep. <laughs> I end up dying to Brill Roaches. Actually, one thing to notice there was that I had a Banshee and a Raven, and they weren't clearing creep. So that means my code to, like, not build those objects when I'm dying was still working, at least. I would like to start dying though after I start clearing creep and see if that it'll pull my Banshee and Raven back. That same one is going to die the exact same way this game. Got 
gosh, that's scary, man. Zerg economy with speed mining is crazy. This is why he's good at creep. Look at the minimap. He has like Grand's vision for anywhere he wants to put a tumor. Twenty-four roaches reaching my base at the uh, five-minute and change mark, and that's with a third base and four queens at home. This is the second one right away. I don't have a banshee this time, so I don't have that test. Scary timing. Maybe if my bot picked like a um, build where I go CC first into Planetary Fortress, it would be better. Oh, we got some more games. Lost to Eris and a win versus Xena. Did he even scout you? Maybe with the Overlord? I think if he attacks into my pre-siege tank with Cyclones kiting back, it might be better. But that game, my tank was at the third and he attacked my natural. One of my Cyclones ran up the ramp and immediately died. I have a bunch of Hellions which are almost useless in that spot. I do have good Hellbat micro objects now. I should um maybe put in logic to turn my Hellions into Hellbats in certain scenarios. Like a mass roach all in. Yeah, he's doing a different build this time. Late Roach Warren, Evo Chamber. Almost feels like a different butt. Like, where's his, all his overlords to help him spread creep? Oh, this isn't. This is Eris. Never mind. Okay, here we go. Creep's not going to be helpful. Or, uh, folks not going to be helpful, I mean. So the Benji got pulled away to clear out an expansion base, I guess. I don't know what happened to that. Gee, maybe it died.
He does have a larger army than me, and it's close to my bases, so I don't think I'll be... Yeah, nothing's out on the map clearing creep. I just double check that that's true. Yeah, Banshee's fighting. These ravens are just trying to clear out expansions, I guess. That's a place to rebuild the injury. I don't know when they created that creep clear object, but as soon as the army arrived over here, he's like, nope, freed it up. Because I was dying. Yeah, this game's looking very over. As much as I want my bot to win, I do also want to see negative zero play Eris again. They had a pretty epic uh, best of seven last time, went to game seven. Can I survive? No. Okay. Alright, well we do they would do have one win to look at. If I got to see the most creep clearing in this game. Oh, that's a win versus Eris. How are we going to get to Eris now, though, with negative zero? Crushing my best build versus him? I have one other build that's like 20% versus negative zero that I feel like I can get to a win, a winning situation, but... If that's all I have, is that a build that's currently only 20% versus negative <laughs> zero. That's a bit of a long shot. Long term, I gotta teach my bot to play bio. I don't think there's any way to compete versus Protoss without it. Otherwise, stalkers with good micro can kind of just kite everything to death. And that's not even their OP units. Mm, looks like the Mass Roach building in. Did we somehow hold that 
40 supply roach attack at the 5 minute mark. We do have a ramp. That helps a little bit more. I'm doing the same strategy versus him. There's a roach horn. Something must go very wrong for him. I can't, I can't see how I can hold versus this. Especially as Burrow finishes when he arrives, so like how do you even kill the roaches? There he goes. Even attacking earlier this time. Oh, I did try to get someone back into the siege tank. Yeah, but he's got Burrow. Missile turrets over here, so at least I can kind of just wall my cyclone out. Uh, the wall messed him up. You know, when you try to click into your opponent's base and the units just run in the corner instead of going to the ramp? Kind of what happened to him there. Alright, this will be a good test for the creed spread though. Just look at that mini map. With the roach all in, he still has the entire map covered in creep at the 7 minute mark. I guess he does make 4 queens still. There's a banshee on the way. I couldn't see that creep to her, because my raven was too afraid of the queen. Hmm. Not a big deal, but if you have plus one on the banshee, you can two-shot the... Great tumor instead of three shot. So the banshee got low, so I went back home to repair, which freed up this raven. So now this raven's on expansion clearing duty. <laughs> Look at this mini-map. <laughs> if you looked at this mini-map, you would not suspect this is my new creep clearing code. <laughs>
That's actually good. Remember how stuck my bench used to be whenever like, cause this is like a chasm down here, right? Little bay. And it was able to find its way out and around pretty well. So that was the code I was struggling with for the longest time. Just getting that pathing right where it tries to get to the next place in the correct manner. I think it's actually trying to circle back at this point, but it just keeps seeing creep tumors. And as long as it sees creep tumors, it's going to keep going after them. This is probably the best test for this, uh... Creep killing banshee thing. Man, with plus one though, it would have been much faster if I could two-shot all these bit- all these tumors. Like, I guess because his army is close to my base. Or because my bench got low. One of those reasons they kind of broke out of the creep clearing spot. Creep tumors. Spot's insane with the creep. When I select uh, targets to shoot at, I should make sure I be looking at the lowest hit points uh, creep tumor range. And also, there's multiple creep tumors. My banshee's like spreading the damage among them. So if I get pushed away, I may end up killing like no creep tumors when there is a possibility to kill one or two. Even his main base. <laughs> it's 
concrete machine. I don't think I've ever seen like 40 tumors in a Zerg main base before. Alright, let's check out the win versus uh, Eris and then call it a night. And we can be counting now now as well. Uh, what are we going to do against negative zero? Why do I always end up on the bracket side of negative zero? That does sound like the title of a YouTube video. Or like a paid advertisement pretending to be a news article. Been out for a little while, hasn't it? I think that little chunk of code I removed is what keeps the bench here like a buffer position away from the queens. Or maybe the API just isn't updated with the new queen range. Where's this creep? He doesn't have any. This is Eris, he's supposed to have creep all over the map by now. Should be trying to get back to the Raven when he gets separated like that.
it's a bad game for testing creep spread removal because there's no creep. It's got a couple tumors over here and that's about it. It's because I killed a couple tumors and that's all it takes. Are those couple tumors usually what fills the entire map? Yeah, it's nice to watch a win versus Eris, but uh, in terms of this being a good example of a crate spread. Removal. I don't think uh, there's really any creep to remove. Yeah, I guess my creep tumor bench users are probably just getting a lot of damage from all these anti-air units. And then they give up and go home to repair. I, I noticed it's only reporting zero. That might be a bug. Build a million bunkers and try a PF rush while he's building up the stalkers to deal with it. You know, he doesn't attack with probes. If there is a pot a PF rush could work against.
How fast could I go to PF Rush? <laughs> and assuming I can get away with it, where's the best place to put it? Like you'll have a main and a natural. PF Rush is a natural, I guess, and contain him, but I could also put it in the main. Sometimes bots are dumb and they try to kill the planetary or kill the command center with a f the, try to kill the flying command center with a ground unit like a probe or a zealot. But in that failed attempt to kill it, what they're accidentally doing is preventing it from ever landing. I guess one more thing before I go to sleep. I do have this build. Wow, actually. Oh, check that out, huh? Ever since negative zero fixed the issue versus the... <laughs> Ever since he's fixed the issue versus my bunker contain, it looks like my mech build has all of a sudden become super strong against him. So the one thing I've noticed with negative zero is that he seems notoriously greedy, which is good in the bot meta. Bots aren't very good at mm -hmm. all ending in a smart way, I guess, or putting on a lot of early harass. So being greedy is often the good for you in the meta. But with that said, if there's a bot that's stronger than you and you can see the glaring weakness, Like, you used to always do proxy of debt. He's not doing that this game. And then just be super greedy behind it, expanding and stuff. And our trapped SCB. So the one issue I noticed with this, he's not doing the proxy adept, but sometimes he has an adept behind me and he like shades and stuff and it distracts my army and keeps pulling them back. And I think if they don't get pulled back, this just seems like a really overwhelming attack. Just checking for a third, I guess. You might tank on siege when the shade's about to finish. So the tanks are worried that uh, the shade's going to complete in the blind spot.
Thanks that are hard decision making for an opponent. It's like, yeah, you can stay out of tank range, but eventually the tanks are just going to push all the way into your main. And it's like, when do you try to jump them? Yeah, maybe his calculation to jump the bunker, once he finished that calculation, it made it so he just never jumps this many siege tanks. Yeah, I definitely get distracted by those shades. I think if I fix that... Even caught me on siege, so it's still a landslide. I do like that this build is looking good now. Maybe whatever changes he's doing can't handle both of my builds. And I can definitely make this build on the other build a little bit better. But I think that's all I'm going to have versus negative zero. The other one that has a little bit of success is uh, my marine all in. Do I call the seven racks all in? Oh, I'm on Miami right now.
Yeah, so he has some losses. He has some losses were against me with this. Not many though. Yeah, December 3rd is when it started getting good for him. But from December 1st to December 3rd, he's been losing to this mech all in build. Oh well, I'm going to bed. Have a good night, everyone.